pray and hope for my family, relatives, and friends, and for all those dead known to you alone. In company with Christ, who died and now lives, may they rejoice in your kingdom. Where all our tears are wiped away, unite us again together in one family to sing your praise forever and ever. Amen. Benjamin was a good boy, Peter. Of course he was, Father. He never had the chance not to be. Sarah said, uh... Did who did it came forward? Yeah, he did. Um, there's still gonna be an investigation. Though, so. Same as the best there is. Okay. In good hands. was told what to say, and he lied. He was drinking and horsing around, not paying any damn attention. Klaus wasn't paying attention, Peter. We got him the jacket and the hat for his birthday. Why wasn't he wearing it? Because he didn't like the jacket. I told you it was too big. He was supposed to grow it. The judge wants us back. When any defendant faces criminal charges, it puts a great burden on the person in my position to render justice. While it can be construed that there was negligence on the part of Mr. Thompson and that alcohol could have been a factor, I have no way to determine the state of Mr. Thompson's sobriety at the time of the event. It appears, however, that the young victim's father, Mr. Brennan, failed to ensure that his son was wearing the mandatory safety attire, thus putting that child at great risk. I've listened to the testimony, I've reviewed the evidence, and while I find no one legally culpable, I find everyone responsible. There is insufficient cause to proceed with a criminal trial. It's bullshit. That judge was paid off. Kid's father's a big shot on the city council. You don't think they... Hang out together, look out for one another, some big fucking club. Stop it. I had enough time. 
I want our son back. And I don't. Ben is gone. And the sooner we accept that, the better. But I want justice! Oh, damn it. It's a well-respected charity. They said everything goes to needy families. What's the damn rush, anyway? What's it hurting? It's hurting me, Peter, okay? I admit it, I can't take it anymore. I, I need his things gone. Mother, why don't you give your sister a call? I'm sure she's got nothing better to do. This month marks the 20th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. But for many residents, November is a solemn reminder of the disaster. Mac, don't you ever leave? Peter! Uh, hey, we all have our calling. God, I haven't seen you since uh, Margie's wedding. Yeah. I hope not. You know what the... Okay. I got this one. Here? And seven back if you're buying. <laughs> you know, Peter, you don't mind my saying. I think it was me. That son of a bitch who did it wouldn't be walking. And if your father were alive, be the same thing. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Mac. And a shrine for Kennedy supporters the world over. Two days later, accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald was cut down in the basement of the Dallas police station by local nightclub owner Jack Ruby as a nationwide television audience watched in stunned disbelief. Yeah. Twenty years later, I know what questions you're persist as to Ruby's true motives, whether he knew Oswald, and if the two had been part of a larger conspiracy. Why not keep something? You know, there may come a time... A time when what? And walks through the door asking for something to play with? It's just so final. Like most everything, I guess. So, this is going to needy families, right? Couldn't tell you.
There's ice cream if you like. Mrs. Brennan? Yes? Is that your vehicle? It's my husband's. Why? Is he home? Another fundraiser officer? Don't you guys ever give it a rest? Step out onto the porch, please. Wait, what's going on? Sorry about the wise crack. I said step out onto the porch. Sir, were you driving this vehicle in the vicinity of McPherson and Fifth this afternoon? Yeah, I guess I was. Yeah. Sir, turn around, please. You're under arrest for a suspected hit and run. Andy, call Sam. Yeah, what did you do? Everything is going to be okay. Just call Sam. Just call Sam. terrible for you and Annie. I've given the company eight years. And we appreciate it, Peter. This is for your own good. We'll make sure you get a nice severance. And once you get this thing in its right place, you can always try us back. The dry cleaning? Forgot. Listen, I, I got a call from Sam today. He said he tried to work, but there was no answer. He said the Thompsons wanted to file a restraining order against you, but that he talked them out of it. Should be against that fucking kid there. He talked them out of it with a personal guarantee that you would get some help. There's a group that meets at church you want to go, go. Sam had no business promising them anything. It was our kid that was killed. Not theirs! Not his! Ours! God damn it! Yeah, buddy. Yeah! All right, you got it. Way to go, big man. Yeah. Two packs of reds. Son of a bitch. He says to his secretary, Hey, Marilyn, hold me steady while I get a shot of the president. Three hours later, he's got 50 grand in his pocket. In Life magazine, Dave Six is the film. Sorry about the wait. What can I get you? Beer and a seven bag. What is all this? Kennedy gets whacked by some nut job, and these guys sit around and talk about it. 20 years ago. Maybe it gets him out of the house. I don't know how many of you have seen it, but this month's Diary magazine makes one thing perfectly clear. And that is that for two decades, for more than 20 years, documents pertaining to the assassination... Don't forget your donut. Our president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, have been kept from us by agents of our own government. And not only have they kept us from the truth, but they have also altered that truth so as to make black appear white and white appear black. Unfortunately, one thing that they no longer can hide is the film that I'm about to show you this evening. 
in which the laws of science speak truth to power. And the notion of a lone gunman firing from above and behind melt like a child snowman in spring sunshine. And perhaps brings us one step closer to justice. as much demand as there used to be. Um, here we go, and it goes all the way down there. When you figure out who did it, let me know. What are those? Some books from the library. Plot to kill the president. Nice. What's this? Good grief. A seven step path to healing and renewal after loss. There are seven stages of grieving. Can you name them? Only the first three. Drinking, drinking, more drinking. Yeah, I noticed. Did you hear that? Hear what? Sometimes I think I hear it. Annie, don't. No, it's real. I, I can hear his voice. Yeah, maybe he wants his stuff back. Bastard. Annie, I was just How trying to love dare lie. you! Stop Annie, it! I was just making a joke. A joke? In case you haven't noticed, Peter, we're the joke. Six seconds in Dallas. It's one of the first. Is that good? It's always good to start at the beginning. I saw you speak the other night at the meeting. I'm Alan Atwood. Peter Brenner. It says here that three shots were fired in five and a half seconds but it took nearly half that time to load and fire Oswald's rifle once. Is that true? Yes. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, listen, Peter, a few of us get together in private outside of the public meetings, and tonight we're meeting at my house. I think you'll find it interesting. Thanks. Me after that. Can I get a clean up on aisle three, please? Hey, can, you, can you cover for me for a minute? Sure, honey. Take as long as you need. Peter 
breaded, please. No, th there must be some kind of mistake. He Hello? What are you reading? On the path of the assassins. Are we closing in on the real killers, Peter? Just make sure you let me know, okay? Because I, I certainly wouldn't want to get in the way of that. Hey, tell me. What happened? Thompson kid came in today. Did he see you? Of course he saw me. I had to ring him up and bag his crap, him and that girlfriend of his. You know, Peter, there, there's another group at church tonight, and I really think we should go. No. No, don't. I really think you should I come can't, with I have me. To finish if you what? don't come with me. What? Peter. What if I don't? You know, I called you at work today and and they told me you'd been let go. When were you planning on telling me that? I was going to tell you, and it, it just, it slipped my mind. It slipped your mind? Really? Losing your job? You know, I, I can't go on like this. Listen, no, Annie, please I... No, don't touch me! Why should tonight be any different? I think we need some time. I've given it a lot of thought, and Sarah has offered to let me stay at the lake to help get myself clear on this. Clear on this? Clear on me? It's more like it. No, Peter, that's not what I'm talking about. Sure it is. Sarah has blamed me for Ben's death since day one, and so have you. Admit it! Peter, stop it! Stop it! You're the one that wanted every last memory of Ben out of this house, and now it's gone. You're fucking leaving. Great. What more do you want? I want us, Peter. We're not the same anymore. Why can't you see that? God damn it, Annie, this listen. This environment is toxic. I have never seen you drink this way. I am so sick of hearing about guns and death. Toxic. Where'd you get that? From Sarah? No, from group. From group. Did you tell your group how you haven't been a wife to your husband? Hmm? Did you tell him that? Huh? Peter, don't tell Can I help you? Uh, Alan asked me to swing by. Peter. Good. Glad you could make it. Uh, would you like a drink? Sure. Jerry. Uh, make Peter a drink. Manhattan? Sure. Great drink. There you go. My uncle turned me on to those when I was 10. Thanks. Anyway, I came to the conclusion that these two murders were connected. Subsequently, I read everything I could find on the site. One year, and I came to the realization that the assassination was not the only thing. It was the only thing I could hear. So you're the guy Alan brought in from the cold? Sorry. What? I thought a new guy was coming. Okay. Right. I guess he did. <laughs> Donnie Brack. 
cars are my trade. This is my real calling. Peter Brennan. Alan's right. He's an intoxicating mistress, the quest for truth. The perfect alternate reality. You round the corner of Elm and Houston and move slowly down the grade toward the triple overpass. A hundred different vantage points, a thousand sets of eyes. Yet only one truth. Oswald was either in the window or he wasn't. Ruby either knew Oswald or he didn't. Just when you think you know everything about her, bang, the door slams shut. The theory shatters into a thousand pieces. So, pour yourself a drink, swallow your pride, begin again, hoping that maybe you'll see something you missed. One piece of evidence that's undeniable, incontrovertible. The narrow of truth shot straight into the heart of the lie. Gentlemen, to the arrow of truth. Six hours of steady rainfall have left many homes in the metro area knee deep in flood waters. Power was out for three hours in East Metro because of damage to the lines and police reported at least two hundred accidents. No injuries were reported. Cleanup is expected to take at least two days. Damage to homes and property is pending for a million dollars. Can I help you? Um, uh, coffee, please. Cream and sugar? Over there. are on a fishing expedition that's all they should buy some rods and reels and a few worms and go stand in a river somewhere they'd have better luck for some however the assassination of president kennedy remains even 20 years later the greatest murder mystery of all time
shot. I'd like some legal representation. These police officers have not allowed me to do the commandment. Like most people at the time, I, I guess I never gave it much thought. That's what they counted on, Sam. The Warren Commission was a huge public relations stunt to sell Oswald as the one assassin. No second shooter. No conspiracy. No conspiracy. No coup d'etat. No coup d'etat. It's business as usual. Maybe. But a lot of people think it happened just the way they said it did. Sam, where's your umbrella? It's a beautiful day. I didn't bring an umbrella. Exactly. Damn it, Peter. As your attorney, I'm obligated to tell you. Sitting in front of the Thompson house was bad enough. We're lucky they let that pass, but the other night, actually following the kid into a restaurant? One more incident like that, there's nothing I can do for you. No matter how justified you may feel you are. I can't even eat in the same restaurant uh, with him now? That's not what I meant, you know it. Look, are we gonna see you tomorrow? No, I don't think I'm gonna I make really it. I really think Annie would love it if you made it. It might do you some good. It's Thanksgiving, for God's sakes. Besides, what else you got to do? Not a damn thing, Sam. Not a goddamn thing. Oh. Pete, come on. Pete, that's not what I meant. Peter, Pete! Please, let me handle this. Why don't you go chop some firewood or something? Love you too, honey. I'll uh, set the table. Holiday dishes are in that cabinet up there. Oh, that must be Peter. I told him to come home early. Peter! Peter. Sam, I told you Will was coming. Will? Will. It was supposed to be a surprise. What the hell? It's Thanksgiving. More the merrier. Sarah, mm -hmm. what's this all about? Like I said, it was supposed to be a surprise. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly is that. So, Peter, just make yourself at home, and uh, I'll grab you a beer. Thanks, Sam. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Peter. Happy Thanksgiving, Annie. Listen, Peter, let's just try and have a nice day today, okay? What's that supposed to mean? Hello. Happy Thanksgiving. Peter. Will. Will, hey, great to see you. Uh, Sarah told me you're coming, and uh, glad you could make it. Me too. Like I said, let's just try and have a nice day. As it turned out, Sam wanted peach, and I wanted huh. yellow, so we settled on seafoam and yeah. bought a new sofa. <laughs> End of story. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there was an eyewitness named Virgil Hoffman, who saw two men with a rifle running away from the grassy knoll along the railroad tracks. Peter, I thought we are off the subject. Look, Peter, if that's the case, why didn't he tell anybody? He was a deaf mute. No one bothered with him. And, and the Warren Commission ignored him. Finally, after 14 years of frustration, he came forward again. Yeah. To collect a check, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Burke, I would love to hear more about your practice. Peter, did you know Burke was a veterinarian? No, Annie, I didn't know that. I just met him. How would I? <clears throat> Go on, Burke, tell us. Uh, I, for one, would love to hear about your practice. It's nothing, really. Oh, well, sure it is. We got fed up with the city, and Burke realized that... Sarah, uh... would you uh, pass me the salt and pepper? 
Burke realized that a reliable animal hospital was... Really needed up here. Absolutely. This is where Zapruder was standing. This is where the freeway sign is. The motorcade looped around here. The man with an umbrella stands just in front of the sign, just out of sight of Zabruder's camera lens. He holds it out and up, not 20 steps from where Kennedy's head passes on a sunny day without a goddamn cloud in the sky. On the film, when Kennedy appears from behind the sign, he's been hit. You can see, you can see the expression on his face that he has been hit. Maybe he was just hung over, you know? I, I hear those Secret Service agents could really put it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't we change the subject? It's been 20 years. Nobody cares about that anymore. Besides, it's so gruesome. Do you know what this man, this so-called umbrella man, said when he testified before Congress? That he was protesting. <laughs> Joseph Kennedy's support of Neville fucking Chamberlain. I mean, who is gonna buy that crap? Hey, Pete, um, Washington's playing Dallas. Why don't we go into the living room and, and watch the game? Did you notice that today? Thanksgiving Day, and it's November 22nd, and Washington is at Dallas. Fuck you, Will. Oh, God, Peter. Hmm. I guess uh, you can take the boy out of the trailer park, but uh, how, does, how does the rest of that one go? Come on, Pete. Uh, why don't we go watch some football? Goddamn football. Is that all you people care about? I don't know. It's getting late. I better get heading back. Are you sure? Oh, come on. We still have dessert. Say goodbye for me. Will you? to 205, an 18th of a second. Well, Kennedy's head snaps nearly 40 degrees. That can only be a reaction to a gunshot. My God. Hmm. Play it again. 204, 205. 
204, 205, 204, 205. The point is it comes only a second and a half before the moment everyone agrees is when Connolly is hit. You know what that means. Oswald couldn't have fired both shots. Not enough time. And the shot came from the front. If we're to believe the doctors in Dallas. An entrance wound to the throat was how Dr. Perry described it. Firing from the grassy knoll simply presents too many obstacles. Which brings us to the only conclusion possible. This is the man with the open umbrella. The umbrella man. Protecting himself from blue sky and fall sunshine on a late November day in Dallas. Peter, this is good work. This is, uh, this is going to put you on the map. Hunter? Sorry? Do you hunt? Not anymore. Personal protection, then? Oh, uh, yeah. How's this? Nine millimeter, semi-automatic. State of the art. Thinking about something a little more like that one. Are you coming? You're not even dressed. No, I, uh, I really, uh, you go. Well, you said you'd come, so. You said you'd come. You know, you act like you never even had a son. Or a wife, for that matter. That's pretty good. You're the one that walked out. How's Loverboy, by the way? Willie's just a friend, Peter. Right. Jack Ruby's just a nightclub owner. Oh, please. You know, here. You picked this up by mistake. You opened it. I thought it was a bill, okay? It's an invitation. I know. To New Orleans, they've invited me to speak. You could come with me. We could make a weekend out of it. We don't have that kind of money. They invited me to speak. Just stop, okay? I don't want to hear about this anymore. How, how can I not go? They respect my work. Your work? Fixing things is work. What are you saying? That, that serious research isn't work? Standing at a damn cash register for eight hours is work. This? This is an obsession, Peter. Obsession? Unbelievable. Kennedy has been dead for what? 20 years? A bunch of men meeting at the Swiss Vale Lodge are not going to solve anything. You have wasted your time and my time on this, this thing you do. Wasted my time. Look at yourself. Getting, it's a brood of 204. Kennedy's head this shifts nearly. This is not going to end three, well. It's not going to end like you imagined. Next time we see Kennedy, he's been hit. In his face, you can see it. Oh and Connolly hasn't. And, and, yeah. God, do you know what that means, Annie? I'm so bright. I, I don't know why you're doing this to yourself. Why? It proves it. It proves it that once and for all, Oswald didn't do it alone. He didn't do it alone. Oswald didn't do it alone.
I'm not gonna miss this opportunity, Annie. Not for anything. Sidelights. The crowds are still getting bigger here in downtown Dallas. The motorcade is still not in sight. just anybody to speak. I wouldn't think so. Have you heard? Bumgarner will be there. No, I hadn't. He's coming out with a new book. He's a publicity hound. Yeah, whore. It's more like it. Yeah, well, he doesn't have what we have. Hey, listen, Peter. Deb's giving me grief about going, so I... Uh... I told her I'd be sharing a room. And that seemed to cool her down a bit. Smart. Oh, no. Why don't you ask Jerry or Frankie? Nah, no go. Jerry's looking to get lucky. Frankie can't come. He's got a hernia. Why, Johnny? We're adults. I don't snore. I wear underwear, and I promise, cross my heart, to flush every chance I get. Plus, we'll save some money. And I hear there's this great place called the Shim Sham Club. What do you say? It'll be fun, right? You gonna eat the rest of that?
Holy shit. Sam. Peter. Jesus. What are you doing here? I tried knocking, but, but you wouldn't answer the door. Uh. Hey, I'm sorry. I, I, I was. I was. Um. Well, um. We haven't spoken in a while, and I came to say congratulations. Andy told us about your invitation to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hey, uh, uh, sorry about the mess. How about a drink? Uh, it's a little bit early for me, but uh, thanks. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? right? <laughs> so, um, I bet it's quite an honor hmm, to be invited. It is. Uh, it's, uh, been a lot of work. The umbrella man, huh? <laughs> Who would have thought, huh? So anyway, now it's just a, a matter of swinging the trip. I'm thinking about driving instead of flying to save money that way, but the hotel's expensive. You know, it's, it's not just some vacation. And he doesn't want me to spend the money, but how can I not do it, you know? Tomorrow, I'll leave some cash with my secretary at the front desk. But don't think of it as a loan. Think of it as an investment in the truth. Sam's mother gave us this crock pot for our anniversary. It's about time we break it in. Or break it. I'm not really a fan of stewed anything. I like crock pots. There's something reassuring about them. Personally, I find wine reassuring. Oh, by the way, I uh, went to see Peter today. Oh? Huh? Have you spoken with him lately? I was at the house last week. Did you go in? No. Why? Well, uh, it's a disaster in there. I really think he's losing it. If you ask me, suffering from an acute case of self-indulgence. <laughs> Message from Florence Nightingale. He lost his son, Sarah. And you didn't. I'm just saying, it's always been about Peter. Look where it's gotten you. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I don't know. It's just that... Well, Mom and I always thought that... you could have done better. Better? Better how? A better catch? Better financially? A bigger house? That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes. That's what I'm saying. You deserve it. I loved Peter, Sarah. But I guess my priorities were different than yours. Nice going, Florence. So I ask you, was Lewis Witt nothing but someone trying to graft himself onto the skin of history? Or was he something more? I believe his claim of innocence was a calculated distraction meant to mislead those of us who have embarked on a serious and thoughtful serious discussion of 
how that man fits into the events that unfolded that day in Dallas. As we've seen in many a Western, shooting from the hip can be done with tremendous accuracy by a skilled marksman. And we know the geometric triangulation is a reality in the first sound. The supposed backfire could have distracted from the less obvious sound of a silenced pistol. You know, you see what I'm saying? It seems uncivilized, that's all. Hey! You don't have a first class ticket, so you can't use the first class bathroom? I mean, is that what it's come to? Divide and conquer. Class warfare is the first step toward total control. Yeah, the only person I want controlling my bladder is me. I went inside for one minute to take a pee, okay? Come on. See what I mean? Divide and conquer. Kiss my ass and write the damn ticket then, see if I care. Did she kiss her mother with that mouth? Check us in. The rifle they found on the sixth floor is not the rifle in the backyard photos. Room numbers, gentlemen. Two says that team. Right. I got it. Going to get a snack. That airplane food went right through me. I'll be at the bar. Roger that information. Yeah, can I get a Ruby Dog? No onions, no sauerkraut. Yeah, but then it ain't a Ruby Dog. You better give me two. Peter Brennan, beat Mr. Butch Riles of Savannah. It's an honor to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. Ooh, Livingston made it. Guy's an expert on CIA dirty tricks. Ultra paranoid, too. Every year he swears he won't get on another plane. Inhaling from Chicago, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Rudman. He spent 20 years studying the missing frames in this Bruder film. Groundbreaking work. Except, in fact, there are no missing frames. And by the way, he hates being called Dick. Yeah. Who, Who does? Doesn't? And then there's Baumgartner. And the one and only. The man is nothing if not persuasive. He's CIA. Man, the Star Trek conventions were nothing like this. Star Trek was bullshit. Hardly. If you really look at it, you'll see that it's actually a deep homage to the Kennedy administration. You know, the captain, James Kirk, same initials, JK. And the second in command is a guy with weird ears who comes from a strange, otherworldly place, you know? Like Texas. <laughs> All there. Peter, dinner at the fair. You coming? Yeah, sure. Just a man with an umbrella. <sighs> Conspiracy. 
Jealousy is a human act, an act by those who don't have the strength or power or intelligence to do what it is they seek to do. You ready, Tony? I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's okay. Go on downstairs. I'll meet you down there. I will get it. Sorry, man, I didn't know. I will see you downstairs, Donnie. The need for a gunman on the grass knoll was mitigated by the placement of a shooter in... Hey, listen, Peter, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go... Forget it. That's it. Uh, once again, that was Dr. Wayne Davidson. <laughs> for years... Conventional theory has held that the Umbrella Man provided a signal to multiple shooters. An alternate theory is held by Peter Brennan, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're fortunate to have him here today. Mr. Brennan? When I first began my research not so long ago, although it seems like a lifetime, a friend of mine told me that the Zapruder film was the Rosetta Stone to the Kennedy assassination. He said, if you could crack the code and draw back the curtain, the notion of a single shooter from above and behind would melt away like a child snowman in the spring sunshine. After watching the film a hundred times, I noticed something that no one had ever seen before. At least not anyone outside the FBI or the CIA. <laughs> Pay, pay close attention. Uh, the two frames that I am going to show you are the key to unlocking the truth about what really happened that day and may bring us one step closer to justice. I present frames 204 and 205. Frame 204, frame 205. Frame 204, frame 205. 04, 05. 04, 05. 04, 05. Within one frame of film, an eighteenth of a second, the president's head shifts nearly 45 degrees, clearly a startled, involuntary reaction. A reaction shot fired from within 20 feet of the presidential limousine. Shot fired by the Umbrella Man. Oh, five. Four, oh, five. Congratulations, Mr. Brennan. Quite impressive. I say at the very least, you have a firm grasp on grade school arithmetic. Mr. Baumgartner, I don't believe that Mr. Brennan had concluded his presentation. Of course he has. Frames 204 and 205. What else is there? Nothing. You say you watched this, what, a uh, hundred times or so? And then and only then you spotted this so-called proof? Any place that there are human beings, 
There is human nature, and a every fishing place... expedition is what you're really on, Mr. Brennan. Admit it. That's what you people do. There is the sorting of people amongst themselves, against each other. Conspiracy. Conspiracy is a dangerous word, don't you think? Conspiracy is a human act. Mr. Brennan, may I call you Peter? Mr. Brennan, then. I knew people on the Warren Commission personally. They gather and they plot. They bind together in their desires. You don't think they watched this film a hundred times? I know for a fact they watched it at least a thousand times. And don't you think it odd that the foremost legal minds and forensic experts in our country never ever saw what you say you see? Mr. Baumgarner, please, let the man finish. Was Lewis Witt nothing more than someone trying to graft himself on the skin of history? Of all the volumes of evidence proving that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, you come up with the notion that the man who actually shot the President of the United States stood there with an open umbrella on a sunny day so as to not be conspicuous. Shut up, Bob Gardner. Go ahead, Peter. I believe that his claim of innocence was a calculated distraction. He wants no one to notice, so he holds a black umbrella to hide the fact that he's the assassin. Intended to mislead those of us who have embarked on a serious and thoughtful What? A serious and thoughtful what? Discussion of how that man A complete and utter disregard for the facts is your idea of a serious discussion? Progression of how that man fits into the events that unfolded that day in Dallas. Hogwash. Your methodology is flawed and your conclusion is absurd. And in light of this, I'd say that the child snowman is alive and well and doing just fine. Thank you. Spring sunshine notwithstanding. Now, I think we should take a short break before we move on to the next speaker. Ten minutes, everyone. No time. No tiempo. Only you and me in a very expensive lake house full of champagne and jumbo shrimp. You're crazy, you know that? Yes. Yes, I am. Crazy as a loon. Well, screwed up. That's what happened. You know what of it? Shadows in six months. Good fine tuned things. I bet it would be Baumgartner, sir. I need a drink. Hey, Mark Lane's hosting the suite on the fourth floor when we get his book signed. Hey, what does they say about beer? That you can't buy it. You can only rent it. <coughs> That's it. Jerry, I'm coming with you. Conspire to buy a lady a drink? What do you know about conspiring? Just that it's, it's not that hard, that's all. What, are you a cop or something? You know, if you are a cop, the law says you have to identify yourself when asked. Do you even know who you are? <laughs> well, who does it look like I think I am? 
Hiya, Deb. How? Do I know what time? Of course I know what time. <laughs> Research, baby. That's what. Yes, can I speak to Eleanor Witt, please? Eleanor, Simon. I'm sorry to bother you at work. I need to get your address again. Yes, tomorrow, if that's still okay. Lewis is home, I trust? Deb, listen, something big is going down. All right, very good, Eleanor. I'll see you then. Okay. Bye-bye. Deb, stop. I gotta go. Take a bubble bath or something. And so I uh, said to Premier Khrushchev, uh, Nikita, you'll just have to find your own girls. <laughs> uh, Jackie, I thought you were in uh, Hyannisport. Oh, well, you were wrong. <laughs> nice jacket, by the way. I got it from uh, Joseph McCarthy. <laughs> My uh, brother, Teddy, has been accused of uh, philandering at night in the uh, New England area. How are you this evening? Let's make it clear that uh, he also philanders Neat. during the daytime as well. Double grasshopper, Steve play. Jackie was uh, taken aback by uh, Nikita Khrushchev's appearance. Are you even old enough to drink? Mm. I'm old enough to do anything. You are a cop. No, I'm not a cop. It was part of my presentation. You're a little paranoid. Well, I'd say I'm in good company. So is this what you do? Show up and play the part? I was Betty Boop at a pipe fitters convention in St. Louis last weekend, and I cleared $2,000. Do you really need that kind of money? Oh, I do. How else do you think I can afford to decorate the White House? My little brother Ted, Senator Kennedy. Mr. Peter Brennan. Home talk. Fuck off. So, uh, what's a girl like you doing hanging around with a crackpot like this? Pardon me? The man just got made a fool of today. With <laughs> his laughable theories. You say that as if theories aren't all you're clinging to. He's self deluded, Jacqueline. Forgive him. He's had a very bad day. Why don't you take a walk? Why don't you buy yourself some new theories, Petey? And so I uh, took the Queen's hand and told her what an honor and pleasure it was to meet her, to uh, reaffirm our commitment to England. And I told her Leave the lady uh, alone. Was my command. Leave the lady alone! And do you know what the Queen said? Fuck me! <laughs> Now we're talking. It took me two days to make this dress, you turd. Pardon me, Madam First Lady. Let's I get out of here. Jackie, you're making a mistake. Jackie, you're walking out of your context. And every time Nora got up to go pee, she let the water run in the, in the shower. shower. <laughs> right. Wow, oh, that weekend was huge. Hundred thousand people, mad as hell. Screaming their lungs out, fighting with the police. And we, we never left the room. Well, that's because we were having more fun than they were. Do you even like these things? Peter, Jesus, I've been looking all over for you. I have some intel. I was at the phones on the mezzanine, and I heard Simon talking to... Who? Witt's wife. 
He knows where Wit is. He's just outside of Dallas. He's going there tomorrow afternoon, and I have got his address. Okay, who are you talking about? I gotta get there before he does. I gotta go now. How, how much money do you have? Well, not enough, man. Wait till tomorrow. We'll get the guys to oh, pitch in. it's too late. Okay, I said who? Bumgarner. Is that the shithead who ruined my skirt? Yeah, that's the shithead who ruined your skirt. Let me handle this. 62 Rambler, parked around the corner. Pull up front, meet me there. Why? I'm taking you to Dallas. Just get the car, Peter. I'll take care of Bum Warmer or whatever his name is. I can't go, Peter. Deb will kill me. Peter. The arrow of truth, right? come to her senses. Sorry about the dress. <laughs> no. What can I say? You were right. That jerk was all talk. Well, I've got the presidential suite upstairs. You do? A presidential suite? Really? <laughs> Jesus, what's the hurry, baby? Time is money, right? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, a guy likes it. Whoa, whoa. You deal with money, don't you? Of course I do. That's a little thing I learned in Paris. <laughs> what else you learned in Paris? Uh, how much do you have? It's in my pocket. Don't stop. This thing? Yeah, it's like whatever money you need, baby. Ooh, where are you? A banker or something? Not exactly, but I'm... You don't need this either? Wait, no, wait a second. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Where were we? <laughs> lost it all these years. Turns out Sarah had it the whole time. You remember when we got it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You, uh, you couldn't come home for the holidays, so I had to come and visit you. That was a long time ago. You. Well, that weekend at school, that was special, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. You remember the weekend? Of course I do. It was that weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly was. No, I mean, he or she would be, what, Shh. 50? Don't. I try not to. But with you here, it's hard.
She would have been her as well. So with all the trouble that comes with it, you know that better than anybody. What do you say? Well, stop. What do you... those years with Ben for anything. All I'm saying is having a kid was a commitment the two of us were not ready to make. You didn't want it, Will. I did it because you didn't want it. Look at all the shit you've been through. And for what? end up with a broken heart and a nut job for a husband. That could have been me just as well as Peter. No, thank you. Peter held our son in his arms and watched him die. He said after it happened, Ben looked up at him like he wanted to ask him a question, but he couldn't find the one. And I had something wonderful together. And then we went through something terrible together. But he's the only person in the world who will ever feel what I feel. What about us? We loved each other once. That was a lot. Stemmons' freeway sign was removed within days of Kennedy's assassination. They're probably in the basement of the FBI for a moment. A rifle in the National Archives. It's not the same one as the backyard photo. Different straps, different serial numbers. So, Peter, do you have any kids? God, Peter, you can't not talk about it. That's not healthy. You can tell me. She kissed me. Three other girls held me down. She sat on me. She kissed me. I mean, yuck, Dad. I had a son. I took him hunting on the first day of hunting season, just like my father did. Show him the outdoor. Pretty cool. Yeah. These guys were drinking. So why don't you open up your little register and give me my day of change? They say they weren't, but I know they were. I looked away. Just for a second. Dad, where are the Twinkies? something. And they shot him. Look, Dallas. 96 miles. Almost there. Excuse me. I'm looking for Lewis Witt. 
I'm Peter Brennan. Your husband may have heard of me. And again, probably not. I'm looking for Louis Stephen Witt. I would like to ask him some questions. Seems like every time I hang the wash out here on the line, it rains. You work for Rio Grande Insurance. Carlos Marcelo had connections with them. Don't know why I do it. Do you think it's gonna rain, Mr. Brennan? Marcelo paid your husband to shoot Kennedy, didn't he? My husband didn't shoot anybody. It's a lie. Marcelo paid your husband to shoot Kennedy. Where is he? Here we go. Peter, easy. I said, where is he? He's in the living room, through that door there. There's nobody here. Who are you people? And what is it that's missing in your own lives? It's been 20 years and all you have are your books and your clues and your fancy theories. Baumgartner called. Why? Simon is my cousin, Mr. Brennan. He's coming to pay his respects. You're lying. How do I even know you're his wife? Peter, come on, I think we should... He's still alive, God damn it! Tell me where he is! He killed Kennedy, admit it! Peter, stop! What do you want me to say? That he worked for Marcello or Hoover or Castro? And he was given a gun and an umbrella? and programmed by the CIA or the KGB to shoot that man as they looked at each other not but 20 feet apart. Is that what you want to hear? Is that the kind of man you thought my husband was? I just want the truth. It's because he was there, isn't it? He was part of history, and you're not. He was connected to it, and you're not. That's it, isn't it? And it drives all of you crazy, doesn't it? You killed him. All of you. You're nothing but a bunch of bums. You make me sick. Let's go. Peter. Are you okay? Just get in the car. Dealey Plaza was named after the founder of the Dallas Morning News. He hated Kennedy. The whole thing keeps you awake at night. 
Kennedy shot here in a place of honor for his enemy. You look at it and think, what was he doing out there? Didn't he know it could be dangerous? But that's the whole point, isn't it? That the world was so different then. Our age of innocence. From a distance, it all seems so much clearer. Justice. Seems like something you can depend on. An idealistic notion until you are in the middle of it. The motorcade entered the plaza from Main Street and turned right over there on Elm Street. People were clapping, happy to see him. After the shots began, people ran over here, up this hill, to the railroad tracks, behind the fence. Everyone had a different version of the same instant. But when you're in the middle of it, it's so clear. That's how they must have felt. Who? Peter, who? The witnesses. The witnesses standing right here. Everyone had a different version of what happened. Zapruder. Zapruder stood right here. He loved Kennedy. He practiced shooting frames of his secretary to make sure his camera was running. The triple overpass. It was a hot day and Mrs. Kennedy saw the shade and was looking forward to cool air. Her last innocent thought. The shots came from above and to the left. Car nearly stopped. Right there. Witnesses say they saw smoke from behind that fence. The Stemmons freeway sign was right there. Everybody had a story that day. They all stick to the version they want to remember. The Umbrella Man stood here. Right here. He stood here and opened his umbrella on a sunny day. The sign was here. Zapruder was there. And for a brief moment, the damn sign blocks the view from his camera. Key frames that could have told us so much. How is it possible? It's so absurd. They look away, blink, and everything changes. An instant, over and over and over again in your head! He stood right here with an umbrella on a sunny day, protecting himself from something that doesn't exist. Why would he do that? I have to know why he do that. What is the connection? Why would he do that? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody will ever know. Sometimes things just happen, Peter. I don't know, for some reason, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's God or the universe or whatever. Sometimes things just, they happen. That's what my grandma always told me, she said. She said sometimes things just happen. Oh, Peter. I guess that's just what there is. A pile of facts that I can't make into anything neat. And even if I could, it doesn't change anything, does it? I guess it's possible. It happened just like they said it did. No perfect conspiracy, no complicated reality, just a man in a window. Making two perfect shots in under five seconds. And a little boy. Just doing what little boys do. My God.
Hey, do you think they mean it? I'm sure they do. So is this who you really are? Well, now that's part of the mystery, isn't it? Come with me. I thought about following the rodeo for a while. You know, I'm working on this fantastic Annie Oakley getup. <laughs> I'm sure you'll knock him dead. Thanks for the history lesson. Too long. 